there is no such thing as the perfect video game. But I can't think of any other piece of media that so masterfully executes every single one of its core ideas than Playdead's Inside. They didn't invent the puzzle platformer, and this certainly isn't the first video game to rely on purely visual storytelling, but the way they iterated on some fundamental design choices that were commonplace in the industry puts Inside into a tier of its own. As with any artistic medium, the perceived quality of a video game is particularly subjective. But I think anybody would agree that Playdead had a very clear vision of what they wanted this experience to be. From the visuals, to the unspoken narrative, to the puzzles. Every individual aspect that makes up the whole of this game was executed with near perfection. I don't say this lightly, but you could take a screenshot from any single frame at any point during a playthrough of Inside, print it out, and frame it on your wall. M maybe don't do it with the parts where the child dies, that would... that would be weird. This is far from Playdead's first published game. It's their second. Their inaugural title, Limbo, was originally published by Microsoft in 2010, exclusive to the Xbox 360. It quickly shot to the top of the sales charts and was released on Steam and the PlayStation 3 the following year. By any metric, Limbo was a success. Playdead didn't invent the puzzle platformer, but their puzzles were clever and tightly integrated into the world, requiring a unique environmental awareness. Its minimalist visuals were gorgeous and were landed upon before development of the game even started. Arndt Jensen, Playdead co-founder and creative director behind Limbo and Inside, created this concept trailer in 2006 as a way of solidifying the visuals he had imagined during pre-production, and as a way to entice developers into joining the project. Limbo isn't the first piece of purely visual storytelling, but as an interactive medium, the way the player engages with the world to advance the story was handled better than anything else the gaming landscape had really seen up to that point. The way everything is seamlessly interconnected from start to finish in one enormous map was what really set Limbo so far apart. There were no levels to complete, your only objective is pushing your way past the hostile environments and moving into whatever is next. And since there isn't a single piece of written or spoken dialogue, it's left entirely up to the player's imagination as to what these visuals could all mean. This, in my mind, is why Limbo should be considered a genre-defining title. All of these elements combined turned Limbo into an entirely unique experience in 2010, one that has really only been fully replicated and improved upon by Playdead's Inside. From Software didn't invent the action-adventure JRPG, but something as simple as an innovative checkpoint system springboarded Demon Souls into the now commonly regarded Souls-like genre, and I firmly believe that Playdead is more than deserving of a similar moniker for their seminal title, Limbo. What makes a game Limbo-like, in my mind, is really four things. One, it relies entirely on visual storytelling. There's no written or spoken dialogue, it's completely open to interpretation. The narrative is definitely there, we just aren't explicitly told what it is. 2. Whether it's a flat side-scroller or partially 3D, the game's entire design is built around one seamless but completely linear map, where your only objective is to push past the challenges to continue forward. 3. While it doesn't necessarily have to be horror, it needs to be intensely atmospheric, which happens to lend itself nicely to an atmosphere of constant dread. And finally, 4. Combat is incompatible with this formula. There may be moments where you outsmart or even kill an enemy, but your character is just another piece of this world. You aren't an action hero, you're ultimately just as likely to be a victim as you are to be the victor. An experience this tightly crafted will by necessity be relatively short. Each of the games I'm about to discuss can all be beaten in two to three hours, four if you're a completionist. This means they're very spoilable. My intention with the visuals we present in this video is to ensure that without the context you'll need to make sense of them, they don't necessarily give much away. But these are the kinds of games that are generally best experienced blind, so if that's something you're hoping to avoid, these are the Limbo-like games we'll be discussing. And Keep in mind, this is far from a comprehensive list. 
The minimalism of Limbo is a significant component to how this game instills fear. The absence of information inherently causes our minds to try and fill in the blanks. Martin Stieg Anderson, played as audio engineer, discussed this philosophy in an interview with IGN shortly after the game launched. Quote, One of Arndt's key concepts about this game was that it should be more ambiguous, and each player will have their own impressions. The whole concept of the visuals, the horizon is always blurred so you can project your own things into the spaces. I tried to do the same with the sound with noise and textures, you start to hear things that aren't there. You should subscribe to my YouTube channel. A reduction in detail wasn't a decision made in order to lighten the workload, in fact it ended up having the opposite effect. The designers were constrained by the silhouetted monochrome color palette to come up with more inventive ways of conveying information, which gave us some of the more visceral moments. Limbo is brutal, and I don't mean the difficulty. The checkpoints are very generously positioned right before an encounter that will inevitably kill you, which means trial and error is core to the experience. Death isn't necessarily a mechanical punishment, but for the more imaginative players, it can almost serve as a psychological one. The absence of information causes your mind to fill in the gaps, and imagining your player character as an actual person well, let's just say that seeing a paper cutout of a little boy being poked through the tummy by a paper cutout of a pointy spider leg shouldn't be as upsetting as it ends up being. Limbo's unique design and visual identity inspired more than just the occasional unscrupulous copycat. Looking at the 2017 release of Little Nightmares, it would be easy to assume that its production was inspired by Play Dead's Inside, which was released the prior year, but both titles were announced in 2014, and despite their similarities were developed completely independently of each other. They iterate on the basic Limbo formula in different ways. Inside adds dimension and detail to the monochrome color palette and really shows Play Dead's strengths in environmental design while still embracing the minimalism of Limbo. Little Nightmares wears its inspirations on its sleeve, but is unapologetic in its identity as a survival horror game, and embraces a level of detail that highlights exactly where its name comes from. Your character is regularly forced into scenarios against some genuinely disturbing monsters, and true to the fourth rule that de-emphasizes combat, your only option is to use your surroundings to survive. Whether it's hiding in plain sight or using your minuscule size to put yourself out of reach, Little Nightmares takes the environmental puzzles of Limbo and merges them with tense chase sequences that play on basic childhood fears. I mean, these should, these should probably be adult fears too. Play Dead utilizes minimalism to trick your brain into filling in the blanks, where Little Nightmares goes for a much more disturbingly detailed look. The level of visual polish is exceptional, but unfortunately that polish doesn't always make its way into the gameplay. Certain puzzles that don't always click in an intuitive way or hit boxes that collide with unexpected results are more of an annoyance than a detraction from the overall experience, which is otherwise wonderfully horrifying and one that's expounded upon in its sequel. In an interview with Little Nightmares series writer Dave Mervick, Kyle Hilliard asked about how playing and replaying sequences during testing would inevitably desensitize the team to the feeling they're trying to dial in, and he wanted to know how they were able to maintain that sense of fear. Dave explains, quote, You always know what you're going for, so it's about calibrating that feeling quite early on. It's about conducting those emotions. You want people to feel calm for a certain time, and then you hit them with it. It's interesting to think that a game like Little Nightmares would have a series writer when the game itself doesn't deliver any narrative outside of purely visual storytelling. Playdead's titles, Limbo and Inside, operate on a similar philosophy, but their mysteries are intended to remain unanswered. The story is secondary to the player's individual experience, where everything is open to interpretation. This is not the case with Little Nightmares. 
By the time the first game was finished, over 150 pages of lore was written, and while small pieces of it are explained in the associated comic books, the entire story is very intentionally never explained in the games. Every piece of the unspoken narrative, from the character you control to the locations you visit to the enemies you encounter, are all written with backstories and independent motivations. It's obviously going to be creepy for the sake of being creepy, these are horror games after all, but the visuals maintain a very clear sense of intentionality. Exploring a dilapidated school filled with living porcelain puppets would be terrifying on its own, but the fact that these students, this setting, that they all have a thoroughly fleshed out reason for why they're here and what their motivations are, is one of the reasons this series sticks with you. These are mysteries that have a codified solution, whether or not we'll ever truly know what that is. The nature of visual storytelling will almost invariably come with a layer of mystery. Playdead's Inside is a masterclass in showing everything and telling nothing. Unlike Little Nightmares, Inside doesn't necessarily have answers to any of its biggest questions, and if they exist somewhere within Playdead's staff, their designers have been tellingly tight-lipped about it. And shortly after it released in 2016, Playdead co-founder Dino Patti cut ties with the company founding the studio Jump Ship in 2017. The reasoning behind his departure goes far beyond the scope of this video, but their first title, Somerville, released to middling critical reception. Which is unfortunate, because aside from some unintuitive design choices and the occasional lack of polish, Somerville manages to innovate within the genre in some impressive ways, and instead of operating under a design philosophy of intentionally leaving things open to interpretation, it manages to deliver a nearly complete narrative through exclusively visual storytelling. In an interview with Sports Illustrated, yes, that Sports Illustrated, Dino protested the comparisons of Somerville with Playdead's titles. It's annoying that you cannot avoid that tie, and obviously when I set up a new company, I tried to set up the same values and structures and have the same hiring principles. So if you feel it's similar, maybe that's why, but it's a totally new team. Nobody looked at Inside or Limbo. Aside from the four reasons I would explicitly compare this game to Limbo, Somerville has a very distinctive visual identity. It almost plays like a movie where there's an introductory sequence with opening credits, an act one prologue that establishes your character's relationship with his family, and a weird baby, which I just I just think is kind of funny and it's, it's probably not on purpose. The story starts off with a traceable set of beats. Aliens have invaded. The father of this family is hit by a piece of strange technology, and presuming the worst, the mother and child evacuate, leaving the player character behind. He discovers a strange power upon waking up, and we now have an inciting incident that helps to deliver the narrative, all without a single piece of written or spoken information. There is also a dog in it. And I love him. Its goal is to tell a story, and the mixed reception has very little to do with that. Like so many games before it, poor performance and bugs are two of the biggest reasons cited for its negative reviews. Though it is still receiving patches, at least most recently, two months prior to this video's release. I can only hope that its most glaring issues are ironed out in the future, because there's a fantastic game underneath it all. The biggest tragedy of Somerville is how incredible its final act is, which I only say because of the number of people who likely encountered the aforementioned issues and quit playing before they were able to reach it. If you're a fan of the genre, I can still definitely recommend it. Which finally brings us back to Playdead's Inside, a title which I genuinely struggle to criticize. From its gorgeous visuals, its cinematography, and its endless air of mystery, you can probably tell I like this game. All of these titles are aiming for very different experiences, but Inside is the only one that, in my mind, pulls it off perfectly. The puzzles are immediately intuitive, but they present a genuine challenge. The way Playdead forces you to interact with your environment, funneling your decision making into a finite direction while simultaneously giving its players agency, always manages to make you feel like a genius. There are heart-pounding moments of tension that elevate its otherwise simple puzzle platforming. The world is filled with so much detail and visual information that it spawned countless theories from its millions of players, not in spite of the lack of narrative, but because of it. A story obviously exists here, it has to, but we'll never get a direct confirmation of what it represents. 
I wouldn't necessarily call Inside a horror game, but it has a handful of segments that instill the same sense of dread. And it doesn't seem to matter how many times I play through it, there are moments that always get me, even when I know they're coming. Play Dead and Jump Ship are hard at work on future titles, and with Little Nightmares 3 coming out next year, I can only hope that this secret little subgenre will continue to grow. <coughs> <coughs>